back to Youth Night Live. I'm your host, Justin, and uh, you know, I've decided it's time to bring out some really good jokes. So, first joke. It's more of a statement, um, but back in my day, you used to cough to cover up a fart. Now, with COVID-19, you fart to cover up a cough. <laughs> Did you hear the joke about the germ? Never mind. I don't want to spread it around. <laughs> that was bad. Uh, where do sick boats go to get healthy? The dock, of course. <laughs> and finally, what did the sick parent make their kids for lunch? <laughs> Mac and sneeze. <laughs> hey, we got a lot for you today. Um, but before we go any further, we've got some more games with blue cheese with a Z. Take a look. me blue cheeks to Z and today we are playing slip and slide sucker it's not for the faint of heart Nope. The building isn't big enough. <laughs> the next year, Motion 20, it's gonna happen, first of all. No building's gonna stop it. What we know now is this, Motion was never meant to be in one building or even three buildings. This year, for the first time ever, an entirely new experience. We're bringing Motion 2020 straight to you. Virtual, 
yet together. We're moving from the arena to your living room, to your church, your city, your phone, your computer, your friends, to your world. One purpose, three days, all invited, all welcome, all belong, all together. A generation in motion. Welcome back. Uh, my guest for today is the one, the only, the talented Lolo the Pro, AKA Logan. Give it up for Logan. What's up, y'all? Logan, we're so <laughs> glad to have you here today. Um, and with you sitting in that seat, uh, we're calling that the hot seat. Uh, and the, the whole idea around that seat is I'm going to ask you some questions that are going to make you sweat. They're going to challenge you. They're going to push you. They're going to, going to make you think about what you think. Mm. It's deep, right? Yeah. So you know what? Let's dive on in. Question number one. What's an example of one big loss that you've experienced? Ooh. <laughs> now, don't talk about the time you lost your lunch. Because I just ate it. It's not cool. That's, that's not part of that one. That's, you know, you know. I mean a loss yeah. that left you going, ouch. Hmm. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I actually, I actually got a pretty funny story about this, actually, about a loss. Uh, so me and, my, me and my buddy Garrett, right, uh, we're both coaches for rec teams, right? Mm. Now we're talking about like rec. Rec basketball. Okay, so it's not dodgeball. No, 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 no. Okay, it's, it's not like billiards? No, no, no. It's not, yeah. uh, it's not uh, cricket or croquet? You know, I thought about croquet, but okay. nah, yeah, more, yeah. more like basketball. I get you. Yeah. I feel you. So we were Those at... shorts are too short. I get it. <laughs> no, I like short shorts, but... Uh... No, man. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sorry, back to your story. My bad. So, so we're both coaches, uh, and this is like seventh, eighth graders, so... Okay. Um, we're both coaches, like I'm coaching a team, he's coaching a different team. And, uh, you know, uh, we're both, haven't, we both haven't won a game yet, you know, we're mm, both not that, that good. Sounds like a coaching problem. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's more of a player's problem. No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so we're, we're like the two worst teams in the league. And uh, so, like, it comes to the time when we're literally like playing each other. Ooh. And so I'm like, Gary. It, it, it's, it's a fight for last place. Yeah. Straight Who's it going to be? <laughs> Who's going to be left stinking the most? <laughs> so I'm like, Garrett, I think my team's going to destroy your team. And he's like, nah, nah, man. Like, my can, team... can, can a team that never wins ever destroy anybody? <laughs> like, is that a thing? Well, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> but uh, so Garrett's team. So, so Garrett's like, yeah, man, uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm not, we're going to destroy y'all. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't we make like a friendly bet on this? Like, mm. so, Betting, by the way. <laughs> so um, um, we're chilling before the game. I go, to, I go on Amazon. I type in funny bumper stickers. First one that pops up. It just says, world's best grandma. <laughs> you did. So, you did, didn't you? <laughs> so I'm like, Garrett, like, I'm so confident I can beat you. I'll put this sticker on my car for six months if y'all beat me. Six months is like half a year. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? I'm so confident too. Man, I'll put it on my car for six months if y'all beat me. I'm now, like, if you guys tied, would you both have it on your bumper stickers? Now, that's a great question. That actually didn't happen. <laughs> okay, what happened? <laughs> so, uh, game happens. First quarter, my best player doesn't show up. That's not good. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> he actually showed up with a minute left in the game. Did he get the, like, time wrong? Was yeah, it like... yeah. He just showed up an hour late. He... <laughs> so at that point, I'm like. Check your schedule, people. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, yeah, it comes down to the last minute. It's back and forth. But uh, my boys, they just, uh, they couldn't hang on. And uh, ended up losing. Ooh. So you are, or you were for six months, the world's greatest grandma. Yeah. You know, I take, I take <laughs> okay. 
Close my eyes. That's a... That had some distance. <laughs> He's going the distance. He's going for speed. The song my son loves. Anyway, uh, okay. So, in line with that, yeah. why do you think it's so hard sometimes to look at the bigger picture if we're going through a loss? Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, you know, I think like a lot of the times, just like straight up, Um, we can look at life as like just a bunch of wins and a bunch of losses, you know, Mm. like Mm -hmm. you you have ups and downs, highs and lows, you know, and like sometimes you're the world's best grandma, sometimes you're the world's worst grandma. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, sometimes it's like up and down, you know, Um, and the highs can be like super fun, but like you hit those lows and it's like, oh, like this is, this is rough, like this is not fun, you know, and I think like a lot of the times when that happens, like, we're so focused on like just what's going on like right in front of us, right? Mm. Like we're so focused on the situation, like we're just kind of like this, like it's hard to really see anything else that's going on, you know, when, yeah. when instead like we could be like kind of zoning out a little bit, you know? Mm. Like we're actually looking at everything that's going on, you know, not just the thing that we're facing, not just the thing we're struggling with, but actually yeah. looking at like everything that, you know, God could be doing around us. That's um, good, that's really good. Yeah. Um, I like it. Let me see if I can hit the audience, ready? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, uh, playing off of that idea, Mm -hmm. uh, can you think of an example from the Bible of someone who experienced a loss in their life? Mm. Ooh, I think one of the first persons, one of the first people that that comes to mind. Persons, people, who (laughs) works. One of the first people that (laughs) that comes to my mind is uh, Joseph. You know, uh, Mm. I know we talked about him a little bit last week, but uh, like Joseph, man. This, these guys, like, his brothers wanted to kill him. And just to clarify, we don't mean Jesus' earthly dad. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about, like, Joseph, Old Testament guy, <laughs> yeah. you know, who, who had brothers, mm-hmm. older, the whole technicolor yeah. dream coat thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, Great. Yeah. Just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, not just not Jesus' dad. Okay, cool. Um, but, yeah, like, Joseph was, like, he, they, his brothers wanted to kill him. Yep. They uh, threw him into a well. Mm. They sold him into slavery. You think that well was empty? I think it was. I think the Bible actually says or it was. Was he like doing the backstroke? Like doing the dead man's <laughs> flow? Like, because if it was empty, he just chilling in a hole all by himself. Yeah. Like that... legit social distancing. <laughs> that's uh, that's some pretty good social distancing right there. Anyway, anyway, anyway. But uh, like seriously, like this guy, like if you look at his like some of his like situations in his life, this guy's just going loss after loss after loss, like. Mm. This man is just losing. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's, let's take a look in Genesis uh, 37, 18. And it says this, They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. Like, his brothers literally wanted to kill him. Man, like, can you imagine that? Like, like sitting back and just chilling and seeing your sibling and being like, that's a great idea. <laughs> let's kill him. <laughs> and like the rest of your crew being like, I'm for it. <laughs> If you ever get that far in life, press pause, talk to somebody. Just, wow. Unless you're playing Fortnite, then just like blow them up. Straight up. I'd, I'd agree. Yeah, maybe we need to rethink that. I digress. Uh, so we can actually jump down like a little bit more to verse 23 and 24, and it says this. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him down of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Empty, so no backstroke. No, spa- no backstroke, to answer your question. No, no dead man's um, float. None. Okay. <laughs> but I think like a lot like um, our life today, like Joseph just had no control. Yeah. Like he had no control uh, over the things that he, he was going through. Like he couldn't control mm-hmm. his brothers hating him. I mean, yeah. maybe a little bit, you know, like maybe not. I mean, he'd make some choices, let's be <laughs> honest. But you're right. You can't control what someone thinks of you. Yeah. Right? Their thoughts are their thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, you can influence, yeah. but you can't change. It's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this card and, you know, I'm going to aim over there and maybe it'll go over there. It's like a boomerang. Ready? Here we go. Hopefully it doesn't come back. Oh, hey, you almost hit the camera. That was amazing. <laughs> that Audience, been crazy. watch out. I'm coming for you. Anyway, okay, my, my, my last question mm-hmm. is this. What is true about God 
in the middle of our losses and our hardships. Because I think those can sometimes feel like two different things. Mm. Like we can feel like we're in the middle of something and that's like the hardship, right? We're going through the storm, you know, we're, or we can be on the backside, we're, we're in the hole, not mm-hmm. doing the backstroke, looking up going, how did this happen? I lost. And now yeah. I've got the world's greatest grandmother bumper sticker. <laughs> and I'm not a grandma. <laughs> Like, like, uh, how can we um, remember what's true of God mm-hmm. in the midst of, of that? Yeah. Um, I, I think, like, straight up, it just comes down to remembering that, like, God is for you. Like, mm. just period, like, God is for you. You know, he's always yeah. um, working things out um, for his good, and he's always working things out uh, in our lives, you know. Mm. Um, and I think when it comes to that, like, there's two ways that um, we can help ourselves remember that when we all, can't always see the bigger picture. And I think the first one is just straight up believing that God's for us. Mm. Like, just believing that God is always going to be for us. You know, maybe um, that's like setting a reminder for yourself every day. Like, mm. like um, maybe making it your home screen, like a Bible verse or something that just reminds you that, like, God is with you. Mm. God is for you. Yeah. Um, or maybe even like uh, putting a Bible verse somewhere in your room where you're going to see it every day or car, you know, whatever. Um, but I think just that reminder that God um, is with you, you know. And that's so good because I think sometimes we can go through the, the, the downs of life mm-hmm. and we can feel like it's gym class yeah. and it's dodgeball day and we're the last person picked. Yeah. And we're on their team only because they're, they're obligated to take us. But, but really God's saying like, no, 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 I'm picking you first. Yeah. Like, right out the gate, I'm picking you. I want you on my team. Mm-hmm. Um, and to remember that, that's, yeah. that's key. Yeah. So key. That's okay. huge. Yeah. So that's, you said there was two things. Yes, yeah. That's, I would say that's first. Number like, one, you're on God's team. He picks you. You're not last in dodgeball. Number two. Yes. I would say the second thing is just, you know, when you're going through situations, it's just to remember um, to look around and mm. to find the presence of God in and, like, around you. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, sometimes God may be working for you. You may not even realize it, you know. Um, yeah. I have definitely seen this in my life, you know. I got some bad news uh, a while ago, you know, that my uh, grandmother had cancer. And, you know, it was hard for me to see the bigger picture. It was hard for me to see what God was truly doing. You mm-hmm. know, I was so focused on just what was going on, the situation I was going through, you know. But uh, I just remember um, one night just sitting on a beach. And I just remember... Um, getting the news that my grandma probably wasn't going to make it, you know. And mm. I just remember just being so focused on, on that, you know, when in reality um, I could have been just zooming back. And that's what I ended up doing is I ended up zooming wow. back and actually seeing what God was doing around me, how he was um, turning the tide, like how he was um, taking the worst thing I've ever gone through and making it the best thing I've ever gone mm. through, you know, how he was just working things out around me. But the only yeah. way I was able to see that is because I was able to zone out and take a look at the bigger picture, take a look at everything that he was doing around me, not just the thing that I was going through, you know, in that time, in that situation. Mm. Um, and I think that's just so key um, when it comes to our life today, um, when look, with looking at the bigger picture with whatever we go through and just mm. trusting in God, you know. That's good. That's really good. Um, you know, if that's you and you're sitting back and, and maybe you need that reminder, uh, you need someone to, to, to say, hey, listen, you're, you're too close. Like, zoom out a little bit. Um, just know that that's part of why we do life groups. Uh, life groups are, are spaces where we can come and bring the highs and the lows. Mm. Right, those mountaintop experience and the I'm in the hole and I got nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and to share those and to trust that someone is there that mm-hmm. loves God, cares for you, mm-hmm. uh, and is trustworthy. Yeah. And you can share those things and they can point you back to, um, to what is true, mm-hmm. to give you those reminders. And so, so if that's you and you're like, you know what, I want more information. Uh, there's a number that's gonna pop up on the screen right right below me here um, with a, a text option. What I want you to do is I want you to, to text that message to that number. And then we'll get back to you. Because we want to remind you that God is for you and that you can zoom out a little bit. Um, that was good. Mm-hmm. I look forward to our next conversation. 
Um, but until then, watch this. You can't see what happened, but it was dope. That's all I want to say. Just believe me. Until next time. Peace. Grandmother since was still a maid Sundays Mahalia played Simple familiar ways Like how she kneeled and prayed Willing, master forgive us I trust pastors had us real afraid I never listened yet I still obeyed I got to see how Philly played at such an early age What my father was into sent him to his early grade